Good afternoon, it's lovely to join with you this lunchtime. I'm sorry I'm not live. Um, I have a meeting that's going to overrun lunchtime today, but I wanted to record this so that we could worship together at lunchtime. I hope all are well. I hope you're all keeping safe and enjoying slightly better weather today than yesterday. It was very wet yesterday. Thank you to Ken for his message yesterday. Um, always just so inspiring and wonderful to hear. So we join together, as always, using the words on the screen that have become so familiar to us. So we come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we've gathered in God's presence, separated by distance, but united in God's love. And we say together, come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as always, we have this time when we turn back to Jesus, examining ourselves, confessing our sins, knowing that we are saved by grace. But we still turn back to you, Father, and say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We're not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Our Bible reading is the same as it was on Tuesday, Matthew 6, beginning at verse 9. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven, forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, on Tuesday, we talked about how amazing it was that we could call God Father and that actually we were um, holding together this holy and wondrous God alongside our daddy, our father. And then we talked a little bit about your kingdom come, God's kingdom coming here on earth. That's what we really want to see. We want to see God's kingdom here on earth. We want to see people living, no one in poverty, no one suffering, no one um, having more than other people. You know, just, just sharing what we've got, living in a world where that's peaceful, where people um, really, truly care for one another and strangers and friends alike. And then the prayer continues. Your will be done on earth. We want God's will. We want God's to God to be here on earth. We want God's will to be here on earth. All those things that I've just said, we pray for that daily and daily and daily and daily. So the fourth part of this prayer is for ourselves for our own needs. Give us this day our daily bread. This day, daily, renew us, revive us. Give us what it is that we need to live well in our lives. It's um, not a prayer for tomorrow or for yesterday. It's for each 
day anew. I was talking to um, our mission group on Monday night and we were all just saying how actually it's quite hard at the moment. I think it was Anne that said something about that she wakes up each new day. And she said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Living each day to the full as God intended us to do. And when we think about give us today our daily bread, well, bread is the staple of life. It's the word um, often used for just food generally. It doesn't just mean um, that we can only eat bread. It doesn't just mean that we have a stay, you know, a really staid diet. It means actually that this is for everything. This is to provide all those things that are needed to sustain us. Now, you know, some scholars say that it's a throwback to the time when they were, the Israelites were in um, in exile and they were given the daily manna, the daily bread. You know, they were given what they needed for the day. They couldn't store it up. It didn't last. It was for that day. It's like what the prayer giving us what we need for each day. Later on in the chapter, Jesus will say, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So that it means that we need to come to God afresh each day, not just um, on a Sunday or not just on a day that we remember, but each and every day saying, give us what we need, not what we want. You know, we might all want something that's beyond probably um, what we need. But give us what we need. And then it continues. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forget, forgive our debtors or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our those who trespass against us or forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us whichever version you use a debt means what's owed one's due but in a religious sense it means sin Trespassers is the imagery of making a false step, like losing your footing, maybe going off the wrong way, a lapse, a deviation from what's true, what's right, a sin. And sins, the action of a sin, as well as its result, is about literally failing to hit the mark, failing to do the right thing, departing from the way of righteousness, if you like, going off on our own way. But Jesus is saying here, forgive us our sins as we forgive other people. If we forgive others just a little bit and we hold a little grudge, or we ask God to forgive us, but other people hold a grudge against us. How does that work? How do we live our lives fully, to the full, as God intended? If you forgive someone a little bit, but then you hold that grudge, are you saying to God, well, only forgive me a little bit? Oh, excuse me. Only forgive me a little bit. No, you, what you want is you want to be fully forgiven. And it can't be any cleaner, clear, any clearer. Jesus had just told his disciples not to seek retribution. He'd said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. It's hard. Forgiving people who hurt us can be hard but if you never forgive them truly if you never really let go of that hurt then the people who continue to be hurt are yourself you're the one who doesn't um, move on and we talk about this 
in many places people talk about being hurt at work some people talk about being hurt at church or churches and they find it really hard to move on from that and they want to keep raking it up and they want to keep bringing it up but actually all that does is continue to hurt i expect many of us know um, of families where there's been factions and divisions within those families because people have found it so hard to forgive to truly forgive and it isn't easy and it's one of those things that you have to keep coming back to and coming back to and coming back to but that's okay because we can this is a daily prayer forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us don't just say the words because they're the words but actually spend some time with those words the trouble is that quite often when we're trying to forgive someone it's someone who we've built up a level of trust with and they betray that trust and it can wound us deeply it can hurt us so badly but the path of health is forgiveness the path of healing is forgiving so we must ask for forgiveness time and time and time and time again but also remember that unforgiveness is blocking what it is that God wants to do in our lives it's not helping us to live our lives to the full. So in our prayer time today, we're just going to have a time of quiet. And if there's something that you need to ask for forgiveness for, or if there's something you need to forgive, it's a time to bring that afresh to God. And we'll continue the Lord's Prayer on Monday. So now we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. So now our time of prayer. And we're going to... Um, do what we did on Tuesday and I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer and while we do it just hold before God those who you want those sins that you want to be forgiven for and those who you will need to forgive and I'll pause at that point a bit longer so again we inhale on the one line and then exhale on the other our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us again this lunchtime. I will be with you on Monday. Um, I'm live on Monday, so I will be live on Monday with you at lunchtime. Um, and that would be great. Do take care. God bless. Remember, we're here. Do message us. It's wonderful getting your messages. Um, but do, do message us if we can help in any way or if you just want to talk. Um, and take care and God bless. Ken will be with you tomorrow. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love. As you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God bless.